All right, let's move on to the application. So in these application problems, um, the first thing you have to do is you have to write the equations. So Mr. Gay is celebrating Aaron's birthday party by having a birthday party for his two geometry classes. Here is three pizzas and three bottles of soda for this. So I'm going to put like an X right above the pizzas and a Y right above the bottles of soda. So I have 3X plus 3Y equals 23.34. In the second class, he orders four pizzas and six bottles of soda for 32.70. So we have 4X plus 6Y equal to 32.70. Now, we have the choice. Are we going to solve this by substitution? Are we going to solve this by elimination? And I personally would solve this by elimination because I see this 3y here and this 6y right here. And it's really easy to turn a 3y into a 6y. You do that by multiplying it by negative 2. So when I multiply this by negative 2, I have to make sure I multiply everything by negative 2. So the 3 becomes a negative 6x. The 3y becomes a negative 6y. And then 2 times this 2334 becomes a negative 4668. Uh, and this is where you might want to start employing a calculator, because anytime you get those decimal things, you have to be a little bit careful about what you get. So from here, these 6y's are going to cancel. 4x minus 6x would be negative 2x. But the rest of this is really just details, considering it was writing the equations that's different from what we did in the last little sections. And then we decide what, how we're going to solve it. So what do we get? We have 32.70 and 46.68. Alright, so we're not quite so sure. We can always take out our calculator. Um, let's see here. I'm trying to do this in my head. But here's the big thing. You want to make sure that you're right. And anytime I can convert between these two, I have to uh, then write them down. So 32.70 and 46.68. So we have our, let me get my calculator in the screen here, 32.70 minus 46.68. So we get this negative 13.98. And then we're going to have to divide that by 2 here in a second. Oh, geez. And we're going to get 699. So let me go back to the other screen here. Let me go view, size, small emulator. And let's view. There we go. I don't want that on the screen at the same time. Okay. So we have our 3270 minus our 4668, which gives our 1398. And I remembered I had this 2. Now I forgot in the calculator to divide by negative 2. So let me rewrite this 1398. And then I have to divide by negative 2. And I get x to be not this 699, but not this negative 699, but a regular old 699, which is a definite respectable price for a pizza. And now we have to figure out how much does each pizza and each bottle of soda cost. So from here, we have to plug it into one of the equations to figure out our bottles of soda. So we have our 3 times x, which is our 699, plus 3 times our y, and we don't know, equals 23.34. And then multiply the 3 times our answer, so 3 times 699. And it gives us our 2097. So 2097 plus 3y equals our 2334. So we have to subtract over our 2097 minus the 2097. So 2334 minus the 2097. So I'm going to take 2334 plus my answer. 23. 34 minus, and I'm just going to write it, 20.97, and I get our 2.37, so 3y equals our 2.37, and then divide by 3.
which is cool though knowing on this thing because I have to go back and forth between those and I get 79 cents. So each bottle of soda costs 79 cents, point seven nine dollars So one thing you have to do with all the word problems is make sure you actually answer them in terms of words. So $69.99 for a pizza and 79 cents for a soda. Alright, so the next piece of the video that you're going to watch would be our next uh, target. So in all the word problems, you just make sure that you set them up. And then once you have set them up, then you use the same skills you do in solving any system of equation. Alright, before we kind of call it on systems of equations, I want to talk a little bit about this last problem here uh, before we go to target 22. So create a system of equation that has a solution, negative 1, 5. Now there's a couple of really good ways of doing this. Um, the easiest way is probably looking at the picture here on the right. It says, explain how you determine your system in a, in a complete sentence. Use the graph to help you. So the solution is always the intersection of two lines. So if you have negative 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, we have that guy right there. That's our point. And all we need to do is draw two lines that has this as an intersection. So here's one line, possibly. And I'm going to say that that's intended to look something like that. And maybe here's the other line. I'm drawing a couple of really easy lines. Um, except I pointed at the wrong spot here. Here's negative 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So I need to cross there. But let's make it go right through here. And so all this is, is this line right here, that in red, this line has a y-intercept of 1, 2, 3, 4, and a slope of negative 1. And the other graph here has a y-intercept of 5, 6, and a slope of 1 over 1, so 1x. So these two will both intersect right here at negative 1, 5, and... I drew them so that they had nice slopes and had nice y-intercepts. Another way of doing this, which is completely separate, so that's the graphical way, is to just uh, pick some equations. So let's say you had, let's go with x plus y, and then like x minus y. And then you plug in negative 1 and 5 and see what you get. So negative 1 plus 5 would be, well, 4. And over here, if x is negative 1 and y was 5, so negative 1 minus 5 would be negative 6. So these two equations would have that same ordered pair solution. So both of these work. This is graphically, this is over here just, I don't know, making up a couple equations and figuring out what the numbers on the other side would have to be if you plugged in negative 1 and 5. So either one works. Um, the second version here is a little hard to explain if you're trying to do it in words. If you want to explain this in a complete sentence, you would say something to the effect of, well, I put an ordered pair here at negative 1, 5, and drew two lines that intersected at negative 1, 5, and here are their equations, here and here. Alright, so that's all I'm going to talk about for systems of equations. I did skip over a couple problems, so you should go back and complete those, especially if you've got a 3 or a lower on any of the homework problems, or any of the progress checks or quizzes. If you need more help with all that stuff, go back to the original sections and try those problems again.